was translated that he should not see death. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. The rapture is going uh, to happen. Amen? Amen? But remember, remember, when uh, he comes, the Son of Man, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith in your heart? Or is only activity, action? Or is only this, this, and that? But faith is missing. The rapture will take away the people that still have faith. By faith, Enoch was translated that they should not see death. Walk at that, on that, every day. There's so many things that will distract us from having faith. There's so many things that will judge us. There's so many things that will test us. There's so many things that will try us. And then we forget the faith. We will say, you want to fight? Come on, I'll fight you. You want to do this? I'm ready for you. And then we abandon our faith. And you understand? To be translated and to have the rapture, we hold on to that faith. Any other thing that will come in our lives or people who don't want to fight or they want to do this and that so that they make us drop our faith and we now begin to walk in the flesh in violence, all that will hit us from the rapture. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and he was not found because he had been translated. He had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. It's the faith we have in him. I trust him. He cannot disappoint me. I trust him. He's holding my hand. I trust him. I'm in the right place. I trust him. I walk by his power. I trust him. All the promises he has made for me, they are yes and amen, and I'm living by them. It's that faith that gets us ready. Anytime the Lord will come, look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Money does not please him. Self does not please him. The shouting does not please him. Speaking in tongues, good. But if that's all you do, you speak in tongues, you beat your wife. You speak in tongues, you steal church money. You speak in tongues and you do some lousy, lousy, feel the thing. All that does not please him. It is faith. The faith in him. The faith in the faithful. The faith in the finisher of our faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. He cometh to God for salvation. He must believe. He cometh to God for healing. He must believe. He cometh to God for new strength every day to run the race. He must believe. He cometh to God for sanctification, holiness. He must believe. He cometh to God for power in the Holy Ghost. He must believe. He cometh to God for renewal every day. The strength of the Lord renewed in his life every day. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That diligently seek him. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know of our children, I mean real, real children, those uh, infants, and that is his pray. When we say his pray, pray every time, pray every day. Because it's in prayer we have our strength. And now your child is kneeling down and is shaking the head like this and turning like that. And he's uh, putting the hand and looking through the openings of the fingers. Whether mommy is watching or not, that's not diligence. I said that to say this. The people adults who say they are praying. And they're seeking the Lord. And they, they're doing this. And then they open their eyes. They see what that fellow is doing there. And they're doing this. And, all, and they're looking. And that one, they are, you know, all. And they march. They march. But they're looking and watching. That's not seeking the Lord diligently. 
If you went to the governor and you wanted something from him and you're doing like that, like a little child, like an infant, he'll not count you serious. The governor will say to, you know, the person, that, but why did you bring a man, a woman like this? He cannot even pay attention and he's not even looking at me. He's not concentrating on what he wants. Why don't you understand that if God is going to bless us, the prayer and the faith is that we believe that he, the almighty God, is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God's blessing will now multiply in your life. We're coming to number two. Number two is the pro proclaiming the gospel for the observance by the faithful. We're proclaiming the gospel. We're doing what the Lord has called us to do and we expect that the faithful in the land that they will obey the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 24, by faith, Moses, think about that. Moses couldn't have done everything he did except by faith. Moses here am I. I've seen the affliction of the children of Israel and I've come to deliver them. Get up and go to that same Egypt that you ran away from that will take faith to go back there. And go tell Pharaoh to appear before Pharaoh. Remember, he let when the daughter of Pharaoh had adopted him that he would be king because the lady couldn't be a king and he absconded. He ran away. I don't want that. I want to suffer affliction with the people of God. And he comes to that same place that takes faith. And go tell Pharaoh, let my son go. And Pharaoh said, Moses, Aaron, you keep the people from their world. You want them lazy. I want them to build for me. And you are saying that they should go. Don't come here again. And he came again. When they drove you out and they say, they don't want gospel here. They don't want preaching here. They don't want righteousness, salvation here. And the Lord said, go back. And you go back. That is faith. And then eventually with all those miracles performed, they let you go. And now they were by the Red Sea. And look at Pharaoh and his chariots coming. And you are still standing there. And you are telling the children of Israel, fear not. The Egyptians you see today, you'll see them no more. That's faith. And when God said, why are you crying unto me? Stretch your rod. Rod, look at the sea. It will drown everyone. But it says, stretch your rod. And he said to the Lord, and the Lord parted. Will you be God if he told you to do something like that, unscientific? And just stretch the rod, he did by faith. And then they came over like you will come over. No sea will drown you. No sea will drown your ministry. It's all by faith. And God said, look back. And the Egyptians were coming. They were in the middle of the Red Sea. Say, stretch your rod again. Rod, that's all you have. What's in your hand? God will use to perform a miracle. Yeah. He said, the rod and the water closed up on them. The sun. They came to the next chapter after their singing. At the end of that chapter 15, the water was bitter. They couldn't drink. And the children of Israel began to murmur. And Moses said, what am I going to do? Look at that tree. A representation of the cross of Christ when he comes. Throw it into that river. And Mara, bitter, will turn to sweet. The cross of Jesus will turn every bitterness of your life into sweetness in Jesus' name. And it was so, and it was so. And the Lord made a covenant with them. And he came to the next chapter. What are we going to eat? Now you made us leave uh, Egypt. Where is breakfast? Where is lunch? And God said, we'll give manna all by faith. 
And he went, the Amalekites came against them, chapter 17, and again they overcame. Every chapter, every step of the way, it was by faith. Every day in your life, you'll overcome. Every challenge that comes to you, you'll overcome yeah. by faith. By faith, Moses, when uh, he was come to years, refused to be called uh, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25, uh, it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin uh, for a season. You cannot enjoy the provisions of Calvary and enjoy the pleasures of sin at the same time. One has to go. If the purity of the cross is rejected, then you have your pleasures of sin. But if you're going to enjoy the provision of the cross and the provision of Calvary, the provision of Christ, you have to abandon the pleasures of sin. Look, of, uh, the pleasures of sin. Look at verse 26. Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of in Egypt. You understand what that means? It's like, um, you know, you've taken your bath, but you've not robbed the pomade and, you know, whatever, uh, to make you look uh, good, beautiful, and handsome. But insult comes because of your faith. Insult comes because of your preaching. And the insult comes because of your ministry. And you take that insult and you rub it on yourself because you enjoy it. They insult me because of Christ. They, are, they reproach me because of Christ. I take that like pomade and I rub it like this and I rub it on my and I say thank you Jesus I can suffer reproach with you. That's how Moses saw everything that came because he esteemed the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Verse 27, in verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him. Tell me. Oh, it's invisible. When he was in Egypt, he saw Pharaoh and he saw the fury. He didn't really see him or look at him. He saw the invisible God. He saw those magicians that are going to perform and replicate and reproduce the miracle that the Lord performed. He didn't look at the magicians. He looked at his God as seeing him who is invisible. And here comes Pharaoh. And he pointed his uh, dangerous finger at uh, Moses. And you could see on his face, don't come here again. He didn't see the man. He didn't see the anger. He saw the presence of the invisible. And the Amalekites that came and behind the army of the children of Israel, they were going to destroy everyone. He didn't see the Amalekites. He saw him who is invisible. You know our problem? We see people too much. We don't see God, the invisible one. Somebody is threatening us. We hear him more than we hear the God of heaven who says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. We saw a bully that will bully us down and shout us down. We didn't see God. We're looking at the bully and we're trembling and shaking. Our problem is we see dangerous people here on earth too often, too much. We gaze at them and as we gaze at them, it looks like their furious eyeballs are stronger and greater than the um, fav favorable eyes of the Lord. But the reason why the worthies of old had success is because every time they could endure a seeing him who is invisible. He will never leave you. 
It will never forsake you. Whatever you see of this world, look away and see the invisible. You will always have the victory in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three is preventing the giants of the obstacles of faith. Preventing the giants. Yes, there were giants in the land. And there are still giants in the land. And the giants have just one goal. That the people of God will not get to their inheritance. And if we look at those giants, uh, never, never even pick up the courage to move on and get to our inheritance. They heard that Joshua was coming. And all those kings made a confederacy. And they said, let him come. Or we'll show him we have been kind of forceful, violent, fighting soldiers from our youth. And Joshua still went all by faith. They passed through the Red Sea by faith. They passed through Jordan all by faith. They passed through. And those Jericho walls came down all by faith. And these things were written for our learning. That if we just believe the Lord, there are no giants on earth that can hinder us in Jesus' name. Giants may brag, that's who they are. Giants may boast, that's who they are. They would say, give me one man there. If he's able to conquer me, then you conquer us. We will be your servant. If I conquer him... And that was actually his same person because he failed. Anyone they brought, he will conquer that individual. And he say, why are you watching? Are you not the followers of Saul? Here I'm the giant and I come. Give me one man. Okay, we'll give you one man. We'll even give you somebody who's not a full man yet, just a boy. We'll give you somebody who does not have the strength to carry any sword will give you somebody who does not have an armor bearer. We give you somebody who does not have the experience of even uh, waging war and having the victory. And here comes David. What? Did you hear what I said? Give me one man. And you give this little boy, you want to waste his life, he became more angry. You know, these people who overcame in the Old Testament, they didn't fear the anger of anyone, the shouting of anyone, the sword of anyone, the spear of anyone, the armor bearer of anyone. We're too fearful of our neighbors. We're too fearful of, even people were familiar with that man lives, you know, that side. And we even fear his driver more than we, you know, fear God. And uh, that, that woman, they said, if a woman has a beard and is going a beard here, they said that shows you, she said, uh, you understand. And once you look at a woman and she has some air here, ah, you are trembling. They will kill me. Who can kill you? When Satan, their master, cannot kill you, there are servants that have no power. How can they kill you? They come in the dream. And they have come. They have come. You understand? If somebody is bold, let him come during the day. Those who come in the dream, they're not their cowards. <laughs> and they say, I will finish you. Tell them, when we wake up, you come. <laughs> and I, when I mention the name of Jesus, you'll be nowhere to be found. It's the fear that we have of that man, of that woman. It's our own fear that kills us. Not their power, no. Not their ability, no. It's our own fear that paralyzes us. 
And any time, you can throw that fear away. It belongs to the devil. Send it back to the sender. And when you do that, you stand firm by faith. You prevent all those giants, the obstacles of fear, everything gone in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 29, it says, by faith they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying and trying to do were drowned. Your enemies cannot copy you. I said your enemies cannot copy you. <laughs> Look at Pharaoh. You know, great men can be foolish, thoughtless. Great armies can be foolish, thoughtless. They said, Look at the sea opening. They had never seen any, anything like that before. Instead of uh, praising God and saying, We'll serve this God that can open the Red Sea for the children of Israel. They said, What Israel can do, Egypt can do. I hear you. And where Israel can walk, Egypt can walk there. I hear you. They're digging their own graves. And then they said, Pharaoh said, let's go. Be careful how you obey the commandment of somebody who wants to perish. He wants to perish and he says, let go. Let's go. Me, I'm not going with Pharaoh. I will stand where I stand. I will watch him get to the midst of that red sea. Are you not coming? Uh-uh. You go first. You will not follow them. And they tried to do that. They were drowned. I'm still alive. I am not drowned. You know why? I didn't follow Pharaoh into the Red Sea. Don't follow them. I said, don't follow them. Look at Vastachi. In Vastachi, it tells us by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. All those walls that try to prevent you from your inheritance, all the walls will fall down. After they come past about seven days, look at verse 31. In verse 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not. Give me a good amen. amen. As it was, so it is. Jesus said, the harlots, they go into the kingdom of God before the Pharisees. The harlots were the people that knew they were sinners. And they confessed, accepted they were sinners. The other people, the self-righteous people in the land, and better than that harlot. If anybody is to perish, she would perish, but I will not perish. It is not by self-righteousness, it is by faith. If a harlot comes and he says, I'm sorry for what I've done. I believe in the Lord Jesus now. She'll be saved. If a profligate comes and he says, my life has been wasted. But now I believe in Christ. Immediately he'll be saved. What the people that are saying, I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. I've been going to church all my life. I pay the pastor's deal. I pay my, you know, tithes and offering. I'm not like these people. They don't believe on the Lord Jesus. They believe only in their so-called good works. They will perish. But you will not perish. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And look at verse 32. It says, And what shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, of Samson. Samson. What am I looking at? Samson. Somebody help me. What do you see there? Uh, you know, there are people that talk, that person backslid, that person backslid. So was Samson. But then, uh, the spirit of God came back again. 
faith came back again. And attachment to the Lord came back again. You know, the people that I don't backslide, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I'm always upright, I'm always like this. They don't have the power, but something came back. If you're backsliding today, you'll come back. The same old power will come upon your life in Jesus' name. You know, something, something is left on, uh-huh, tell me the story. And then he shaved his head, tell me the story. And he lost all his power, tell me the story. The New Testament said that all that something did, everything went with the sea. And it's uh, swept away. But now, by faith, something, by faith, yourself there. Whatever your past, faith will rewrite a new story about you. It is not what we were. It is what we are by faith today. And it is the faith that will wipe away the past, wipe away the guilt, wipe away the condemnation by faith. What will I most say? To so talk about Gideon, talk about Barak, talk about something, talk about Jephthah, or David also, and Samuel, and the prophets. The Lord is talking about them because of their faith. Heaven will talk about you because of your faith. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, taught the mouths of lions. Taught the mouths of of lions. A lion is on the street. Go there. Stop his mouth. A lion is waiting for me on the evangelistic field. Go there and stop their mouth. A lion is waiting. I want to make progress. I want to run. I want to walk. I want to fly. I want to do the will of God. But a lion is waiting there. In the case of Daniel, not just one lion, lions, lions, lions. And those lions were hungry. And they said, we're going to throw you in the lion's den. He said, go ahead. I want to prove God more. Prove God more. And then they threw him there. And, um, the, you know, the lions, they welcomed him. Uh, and he laid down like that. And he never had any kind of mattress like that to sleep on in his life. And he slept well. And the king came and the king said, Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God whom you serve able to deliver you? And some, um, Daniel replied, he said, Lay forever, okay. No mind that. That's what you always say to them. They don't live forever, but you know, that's the normal thing they tell them. And that's what they wanted to hear. My God has sent his angel and he has shut the lion's mouth. Have the angels all died up? The angels are ministers to those of us who are heirs of salvation. And then the king said, Daniel, come forth. You will come forth. And he came out. And some people say, you know, the secret, those lions were not hungry at that time. And because they are not hungry, and also they, you know, they, they, are, they are eating so much that they slept in the night. That's why they didn't, uh, you know, crush uh, Daniel. All right, all right. All those people that said the lions were not hungry, and that's why they didn't devour Daniel. Can you try your luck? <laughs> and then they threw them there. Lo and behold, when those people, when they arrived, and the Lord said, meat has come, meat has come, meat has come. The unbeliever is meat for the lion. The righteous, your blood, it will be poison to those lions. And the lions knew that is poison. Don't eat that one. Let him go. Our food will come. When you are there, they will not eat you up. Yeah. After you are gone, their food will come. Yeah. Faith, faith in the Lord. Did who by faith wrought righteousness, 
and subdued kingdoms and obtained promises and taught the mouth of lions. Now, how did he stop their, their mouth? He didn't shout. He didn't call heaven down. He didn't call fire down. He just quietly, you know, you can be quiet and have faith. Without saying anything, there's silent faith. There's shouting faith. When you are around the walls of Jericho, you can have shouting faith. When you are in the lion's den, as you breathe in faith, as you breathe out faithfulness, as you breathe in obedience, as you breathe, as you breathe out overcoming power, silently your faith will keep on walking in Jesus' name. You are in the office, you are somewhere, and you feel a sharp pain there. And it's not a place where you can shout, in Jesus' name, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Well, that place, that's not a place for shouting, silent faith. But your breath going in, your breath going out, that pain I command you, get out of there. And that silent faith will work. And no lion, no giant will ever eat you up in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, number, point number three now. Point number three is our, uh, our perseverance in possession of faith in the finisher. We're looking at three things here. Number one, number one is patiently running. The race by the faith of the Son. Number two is progressively reaching all regions as followers of the Son. And number three is perseveringly um, racing the righteous in the fullness of the Son. We're looking at number one. Number one, now patiently running the race by the faith of the Son. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about by with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside. Let us lay aside. Look up here. If you are traveling and uh, you are allowed a bag, uh, baggage, and that baggage must wear this uh, kind of many kilos or pounds. And as you are packing, you try to lift that. And it's heavier than they will accept as you are flying, as you are going to your great destination. Then you say, I have to remove some things. You remove this, you remove that, and you wait again. It's still greater than they will allow to go with you in the flight. You remove enough, and then you lift it up now. This is good now. Now we're running a race, and we're going on a journey, and our load can be too heavy. Our load can be too overpowering. And when you see that at the beginning of the journey, I have to remove this, I have to remove that, make that load light enough so that you will be able to travel light. That's what you say, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every wage <clears throat> every wage and it says and the sin which so easily beset us and let us run where we run yeah. the race that is set before us as you are you know running the race you understand you must not have any property of satan in your baggage it will make it too heavy. And you will not be able to run very well. What's the property of Satan there? Sin is. Sin. If there is anger. Anger comes from the devil. And it becomes too heavy. And you cannot run light. 
Ouchi, all those, uh, you know, terrible, terrible things that people do transgression. If you have them inside, you cannot. It is atrocity. All the atrocities of the world and the things that the worldly people do, if you put it there, it will be too witchy. Nothing is. If you put it there while you are running, you, they, it will be so heavy you cannot even carry, you cannot even walk, you cannot even stand with all those uh, things of Satan in the baggage. But you take them away and now you are up. You will cross every sea. You will fly over every mountain. You will be springing in your heart. The joy of the Lord and the victory of the cross will belong to you. You will be an overcomer in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2. In verse 2. <clears throat> God bless you. Thank you. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. When you are driving a vehicle, make sure that all the parts are genuine. All the spare parts are genuine. Should in case the car is breaking down on the road. And then you bring the spare part and you fix it in. Make sure it is genuine. But the people that do not have the faith that comes from the author and from the finisher, from Christ. When they fix it in, it's fake. It does not work. Your faith will work. Yeah. And it says, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're running a race. You are running a race. You will run well. And you run to the finishing line in Jesus' name. Whatever you have heard hinders others like you. Those things will not hinder you. But every time, every day you wake up, you check your baggage. There's anything that will weigh you down. Anything that will hinder your prayer. Anything that will remove the wheel from your car of faith. Anything that will ground you. Before you go out, remove all those things. Tell the Lord, confess it to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going uh, or I'm continuing my journey today. Remove this, remove this, and remove this, and let me walk by faith all through my days in Jesus' name. And every one of us, will get to the finishing line. You, where are you? I'll see you on the finishing line. Look at number two. Number two, we're looking at progressively reaching our regions as followers of the sun. Progressively, 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 you'll be making progress. Well, we'll hear stories about you. Good story. Good testimony. Where you were yesterday, you finished the work there, you are here on the new ground today in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 42. In Luke chapter 4, verse 42, and when it was day, he departed and went into the desert place and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them. Look at verse 43. In verse 43, and he said unto them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. Other cities also. For therefore am I sent. The Lord has sent you. It will be a successful ministry. And then you go to other cities, other cities, other cities also. If you've established ministry and church in this place, after this day is the time to now move on. Progress. Higher ground. 
and the grace that saw you through in this city when you get to the next city that same grace will see you through your life will not be limited my brother my sister your ministry will not be limited you've done it here go and do it in the next city you've done that go and do it in the next city you will not be tired you will not be weary like the lord jesus christ you follow him to the regions beyond we're looking at uh, number three here number three is perseveringly racing the righteous to the fullness of the son Raising the righteous to the fullness of the Son. Ephesians chapter 4. In Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, looking at verse 11, and he, gave, and he gave some apostles, and he gave some prophets, and he gave some evangelists, and he gave some pastors and teachers. Look at us here. On the front row, we come and we give the program. He gave some. We come to the side here, a choir there, and we give uh, the program. If they miss anybody out, what do you do? You raise up your hand. I'm here. Are you there? When you say I'm here, oh, you have not got and give you your own. And we come to this side, the side of Khan Choir, and, uh, you know, we give, we give. If they miss you out, what do you do? You raise up your hand. I am here. Heaven will recognize you. And then at the back there, he gives some. He gives some. Now, he's giving everyone. Not everyone receives the same thing. He gives some apostle receive he gives some prophets receive he gives some evangelists receive he gives some pastors receive he gives some teachers receive when we receive you know sometimes those five the fivefold ministry. Maybe you've heard me before illustrate the thumb, that's the apostle. The pointing finger down at the man, that is the prophet. And the middle finger, the one that goes beyond everyone, that is the evangelist. And this one, where you put your wedding ring, that's the pastor, the preacher, the minister of love. And this one, where you put which you put inside your ear whenever something is scratching you there that the teacher that puts the message inside your ear he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers now you may not start at the top when we started my little ministry his ministry that he called me to, in 1973, he gave me a teacher. And then after administering in the teacher's office, he gave me pastoral. After that, I only did teaching and pastoring, teaching and pastoring. And when the pastoral ministry came, he didn't cancel the teaching ministry. And then he gave me the evangelist. And now I can go on the field. The teacher is still there. The prophet, uh, the, the pastor is still there. The evangelist has now come. And then after the evangelist, I was even thinking, when you have three out of five, that's 60%. And that's good. That's past mark. And God says, I'm not through with you yet. He's not through with you yet. And then he gave me the prophetic ministry. And I say, there's somebody there, you have this problem, stand up. And then I pray, and the problem is solved. And now he gave me apostolic ministry. 
God has not finished with you. Say, he has not finished with me. Whatever he has given you, he wants to give something more today. Something greater today. Something higher today. Why? Look at verse 12. In verse 12, for the, uh, for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, when God has given you the gift, when you see imperfection in your church, you will not criticize. You will not run away. How are you going to perfect their imperfection if you run away? When you see any imperfection, you are not to complain. You are not to blame people. You are not to criticize people. And you are not to beat people down. Say, ah, I know now why God sent me to that conference. I know now why God gave me this gift. It's for the perfecting of of the saints is for the work of the ministry is for the defying of the body of Christ look at verse 13 in verse 13 till we all come till we all come say that with me it's not just me alone it is say what God has brought him until he comes no you and I you and I I said you and I we all, until we all come in the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, will come there. Unto a perfect man will get there. Unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We'll get there. Every day, every little addition, every day, every little multiplication, Every day, every little realization, every day, every little demonstration, we're moving on, we're moving on, we're moving on until I, until you, until we all come in the unity of the faith. Our faith is going to grow and our faith is going to work and then we come to a perfect man together and it says unto the measure of the fullness of the stature of the fullness of Christ. I welcome you to a new level today. I welcome you to a new life today. I welcome you to a new possession today. We are coming higher. You are coming higher. Where are you? Get up and tell the Lord. Tell the Lord you are getting there. He gave some. He's giving you your own. You will not go empty handed. He lift you higher. Take you greater. Than the place you had ever been in your life. Don't mind what happened yesterday. Don't mind what happened today. Don't mind where you are now. Higher ground. High, higher ground. You are getting there. Anything in your baggage. That's from the other side. Sin, anger, transgression, atrocities, naughtiness, anything that will weigh you down, 
Remove them, remove them, remove them. And continue in this journey of faith. You are going to run faster now. You are going to go higher now. The calling of God upon your life will be without repentance. In Jesus' name we pray. He has answered your prayer. Everything you have asked him, he has given you. Your life will take on new brightness. New anointing. New power. Where you failed before, you will not fail again. Where you fell before, you will not fall again. Higher ground. Greater ground. The Lord confirm in your life, in your ministry, in your family, in your church, in your profession in Jesus' name. It's of that hand, the hand of a conqueror. The hand of Brother Victor, Sister Victoria. The Lord has lifted you up. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for everything we have learned. We pray you take every fear away from every life in Jesus' name. A new kind of faith new power of faith, new progress through faith. Grant to everyone in Jesus' name the grace to build, the grace to preach, the grace to pray, the grace to progress, the grace for service, sufficient grace, Grant to everyone in Jesus' name the grace to remove every pebble, every stone, every hindrance, and every heavy weight. Grace to remove everything without any sluggishness. Give everyone in Jesus' name the grace to run. The grace to preach. The grace to sing. The grace to do more for your glory. Give everyone in Jesus' name. We as the people of God, we're crossing the Red Sea. Nobody here will be left behind. We as the people of God, we're conquering all the Amalekites. Amen. Nobody here will be left behind. Amen. We, the people of God, we're crossing River Jordan. Amen. You will not be left behind in Jesus' name. Amen. We, as the people of God, were running around our Jericho walls. All the Jericho was before you will fall down flat. We are possessing the promised land. And the fruit of the land now belongs to you. Lord, give something definite. A call. An anointing. The power. The teacher. The pastor. 
the evangelist, the prophet, the apostle, give something that feeds the ministry you have called us to in Jesus' name. Your hands are no more empty. Your heart no more empty. The word of your mouth no more empty. Your ministry no more empty. Your bank of account, account of the bank of heaven in your life no more empty. Lord, give everyone sufficient to make progress in the ministry. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.